<laughs> Welcome to the RNVE. This is the weekly show right here on Comic Story, and where I, Benny, typically sit with Rob, but sometimes other guests, and we talk about some of your favorite comic book stuff, from latest news, to events that are happening, to some fun theory crafting, to just going over lists and discussing the events that came out of it. This show is sponsored by our Twitch, twitch.tv slash EligibleMonster, where every Thursday afternoon, you can see this streamed live right over there. It's also, I was looking at the wrong camera, I think. That's the wide shot. It all works. It's also sponsored by our Patreon, patreon.com slash comic story, where you get early access to this podcast, along with early access to many of our videos and six other podcasts. Everything from our conspiracy show, where we discuss some of the craziest conspiracies out there, to our app game show, where we talk about some of the cool new app games that have come out, all the way down to just Gary talking sci-fi with people. You can see the whole team talking about various things mm -hmm. over there. But there's one more sponsor today. One more sponsor, Dan. Yes, indeed. It, it is Bombfell. They'll pair you up with a stylist who looks at you and looks at your sizing and everything like that, and they send you the clothing. They then give you a try-on period in which you can send the clothing back if it didn't work. Now, I actually want to take a moment, guys. While they are a sponsor, I am a big advocate for this, and there's a reason for that. So I'll take, I'll try to make this short so you guys can get right to the episode today, which today's topic is going to be us trying to put superheroes into sci-fi universes. We're taking suggestions from our Twitch chat today, and then we're going to try to spitball it and figure out how that would actually uh, work. My guests today are Dan, Gary, and myself. Rob was not available today to join us. So what I wanted to say, and this is what I, because I, Dan was telling me that we should do this and that, and I'm like, no, I got, I actually have a story that makes sense why I like Bombfell. Yeah, let's hear it, Benny. So I... Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Dan's like, I haven't spoken. Let me say something. I, I, I spent 10 years in the military. When I was in high school, I was your skate rat goth kid. You know, like mm -hmm. baggy shirt, cargo pants, let's go out and do our thing. Mm -hmm. When I joined the military, the only thing you ever wear in the military is a tan shirt and uh, your camo uh, pants, maybe some PTs in the morning. In the weekends, the only time you got to pick whatever outfit you wanted to wear, but since you were hanging around with a bunch of people who also had zero fashion sense, everyone pretty much wore Walmart jeans and whatever black t-shirt they could get, having zero fashion sense. One thing that I, getting out of the military, had problems with, and I know many soldiers do, is when you get out, you then have to pick your own outfit. And you're sitting around, and you're laughing, but it's true. You have to suddenly know how to match colors, and what is in style, and what is this. And why, why can't I just wear uh, a boot cut jean with uh, my baggy Hanes t-shirt? Uh, why are people looking at me like I'm, I don't know how to dress myself? Because you don't. So, <laughs> and I, I am an advocate for that. My hairstyle right here, guys, this wasn't me being a genius going with hair that works for my face. This was me not knowing what to do with my hair, and then we go to the stylist and she goes, I have an idea. And she gave me a pompadour, and I don't put enough stuff in it to keep it up like this, and then it does this. That, that, that's my sense of style. So when Bombfell first approached us a couple months ago to do an ad with them, at first I was like, I don't, this service will work fine. I get what they're going for. I doubt we'll use it very much, but I have found myself, they're sending me actual outfits that I wear. Like Natalie and I went out for a nice night the other day, and instead of grabbing my Bendy the Ink Machine t-shirt and my shirt, jeans with a bunch of holes in it, I actually had an outfit to wear. I actually looked like I knew how to dress myself. I still don't. I still wear video game t-shirts and superhero t-shirts and act like I'm 16. But this allows me to look like an adult in like proper situations and dress myself. So that's why I'm actually an advocate for Bombfell. And the, the link that you can use from us to get over to Bombfell is on the screen right now. And it should be down below. But I just felt like... I, like, I felt like instead of just doing our usual ad read, I'd tell you an actual story as to why I like this service. Because I don't know how to dress myself. <laughs> if, in the words of Seinfeld... If red velvet was fashionable, I would dress myself in it all the time. When you use Bombville, the more you keep, the more of a discount you get in your clothes. Use our link, bombville.com slash comicstorian. That's B-O-M-B-F-E-L-L dot com slash comicstorian, C-O-M-I-C-S-T-O-R-I-A-N, and get $25 off of your first purchase. That's all I wanted to say, guys. Like, I actually do like this service. I'm actually signed up for it beyond our advertising mm -hmm. so that I can, like, because I have to go to meetings and stuff. Yeah. And some people get that you're a YouTuber and some people are very old going, what is this new media, good sir? And you're like, uh, I'm the guy wearing the Batman t-shirt. Woo! It's weird. <laughs> they all sound like that, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, good sir. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing this yeah. weekend? We are thinking of to going out on a hunt. 
<laughs> with our bird dogs and uh, our bird dogs. Yes. And uh, we're gonna go on a fox hunt, good shot. And I'm like, wow, what, what, what are you people doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did we huh. just go back a couple centuries? I, I don't know what's going on. I think we did because they're that old. Because. <laughs> Gary Couple gets centuries. my shirts. Yeah. Gary, I feel like you and I are connecting better. Yeah. The more you work in this office, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, the more mm-hmm. we're... We can get, me and Gary have figured out that we are the same person. And we literally just took different paths in life. In strange ways, he'll share a story and I'll say, huh, I actually have like the same story. <laughs> only with different people in a different <laughs> setting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, we, multiple times. Two brothers. Yeah. Goth phase. My, my, older, my brothers yeah, are older. You had your goth phase? I am a goth phase, yeah. You used to skateboard and listen to the same music I yes, did? Yeah. We were the exact same person. Yeah. But at 21, I joined the military. 21, you got married and had the uh, kid. A few oh. years later, but yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Early 20s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And that was, that was our, that was our different Actually, path. I wanted to join the military really badly. And then I dropped out of high school and I realized, eh, maybe not the military. But anyway, <laughs> I almost went down that path. I was getting so. framed for uh, robbing a bunch of merchandise at GameStop. And I uh, used the military to skate the state. I did not do that. <laughs> that is where our paths diverged. <laughs> that's where we diverged. When you got framed. When I was getting framed? Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's a story for another day, Dan. It's yes. a great it story. A great I love story, that yeah. story. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. We've reached huh. the point that we've worked together so much that I know so many of your stories. So just hearing the slight mention, I'm like, oh, that one's a good one. <laughs> you know what, yeah. where I almost got framed? Yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, today uh, we are going to go off of these the Twitch suggestions for our sci-fi, but I know you should have at least one or two already ready to go while they're giving us more. You should have. You should have looked this up prior. I did, and by doing it, I said, hey, Dante, can you do that for me? (laughs) (laughs) I was in the middle of making my tea, and for the record, that was a fantastic cup of tea. I am going to make another one after this. I'm just going to say that right now. I know no one's been saying, when I was looking at it, everyone was just naming superheroes. I didn't see anyone being like, so-and-so in such-and-such universe. I was just seeing Superman, Super Sons, Deathstroke. Like, just naming. I got one right here. It's very very topical. Let's hear it. Venom and Star Wars. Oh, I actually read a different one that was also topical. Venom and Star Wars. That's interesting. Okay, so the yeah, Darth let's, Vader let's, doesn't let's have, have our this. usual thing. We need to set rules. <laughs> yes. Okay. What are the rules? Okay. Uh, Venom's all of his powers will work in the Star Wars universe. Okay. Venom is being removed. Either we have to. Get our- yeah. Here's the question: Is it just the Venom symbiote, or is it Eddie Brock, Flash Thompson? Well, let's do the in symbiote. The sim- yeah, let's I do was the thinking symbiote because I would love yeah. to see Darth Vader instead of having his black suit. It's the Venom symbiote. That would be the most terrifying thing in the known universe. Right? <laughs> like he wouldn't need yeah. robotic arms. The symbiote would be creating these arms oh, for him. I, okay, so I think, I'm, I'm just gonna say this real fast. Let's hear it. I think Venom would probably disagree with some of uh, Darth Vader's maybe motives. <laughs> oh, like, I can see he'd be that. like, I yeah. don't agree with this, Darth Vader. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I love how your voice for Venom is like, <laughs> Nerdy Venom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we should I be doing know. this, yeah. That's Maybe probably it's... not the best idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the Venom symbiote. Hey, I don't sound like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'm just Maybe not text exactly that you're in trouble like for. that. I'm for in trouble. Shop says you haven't been buying a month to go pick up the books. It's not been a month. He says a month. It's not been a month. He says it's, it's a month. It's not been, been 32 days. <laughs> but third, it's been 29 I've days. I've been a little busy. <laughs> Comics aren't going anywhere. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> I'll get it. How are we supposed to sell them, Gary? <laughs> so, so Darth Vader with the Venom symbiote. Yeah. It, uh, so anyway, yeah. Darth Vader, um, yeah. No, well, he so, would be extremely weak to lightsabers. How would we make this work, though? So first off, I think the Venom symbiote has to have come into the Star Wars universe a while ago. Yes. It's been here for eons. It yep. doesn't even know where it came from. We'll go yep. with that, okay? Mm-hmm. A portal opened, okay. and it dripped down, and it was all over Okay. something. Palpatine got okay. hold of it. No. Anakin gets injured, and okay. instead of making him a robot, combines him with Venom, making like an agent Venom, but Darth Venom. Darth, Darth Venom. Venom. Oh, <laughs> the name alone sells that huh. entire idea. Okay, okay so th- basically, I think what would happen is you don't really get Anakin. Anakin is pretty weak willed. I'm sorry. Like, you turn to the dark side, you basically, you let the, the Emperor manipulate you, you're manipulated your entire life, you're, you've got a pretty weak will. Okay. So it's basically okay. Venom with force powers. Yes. Is really what you want. Yeah. Or it would be one of those very weird, like, instead of having an angel and a devil, it's got Palpatine and Venom. 
<laughs> so a devil so it's and a not devil. really, oh, exactly. It's yeah. a devil and a slightly less devil. Keep in mind, <laughs> and this will make it interesting because we're going to do Venom in a couple universes real quick before moving on to the next superhero. Okay. okay. Venom's ha Venom, when they attach to us a, a host, mm -hmm. they live off of the emotions from the host. Yeah. Okay. So if Anakin, at his Darth Vader swap, gets the Venom symbiote, mm -hmm. I don't think it wants to be a hero anymore. <laughs> no. But what happens when he turns on the Emperor? Does he become like the Agent Venom? Agent Darth? Who's to say he does? Yeah, I, I don't think he I would. Because he he's going to feed off the emotions. That's what made Eddie go like full blown yeah. evil. Yeah. It was enhancing those emotions. So right. if you get Anakin. Well, okay, yeah. well, which version of Venom are we going with? Are we going Clintar after being cured? Agent? Any of them wouldn't matter because if Any. it's been there eons, it's yeah. just it's yeah. completely forgotten everything. Right. Okay. It's a blank enough. slate, basically. Yeah, right? so it's a yeah. blank slate attached to Anakin, sucks off his emotions. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I know I know the wording of that sentence. Yeah, that's probably not the best way to say it, <laughs> no. but okay. Um, I think that would be probably one of the coolest merges in the history of history. I, I, I would love to see a Darth Venom. God, that would be so What do you cool. think I, he would I, do I, first? Okay, so let's go so, with that. Because Ve uh, uh, Vader himself... Mm -hmm. Well, Obi Wan. When he Kenobi changes over, die. as we've now seen in the current comic line, mm -hmm. while he went with the dark side, went with Palpatine, he didn't fully agree with it. Hence his mm -hmm. turn back in Return of the Jedi. Yeah, right. So with Venom feeding on those emotions, yeah. Do you think he would immediately go against Palpatine, or do you think he would immediately go side? That's entirely? what I was just saying. No, I know. I'm asking. I'm trying to dive into that. Like deeper. that's yeah, because it that brings up the. That's why I was which asking emotion which emotion would he attach to exactly like. Would he even have the capability of showing the slight emotion for the turn? Yeah. Or is the Venom going to envelop him in the anger and rage that that doesn't even happen and he actually throws Luke down? What do you think, sci-fi master? Sci-fi master, I like that. I, yeah. um, I think I'm that... I, I, sci -fi yes, master. I am the sci-fi master. <laughs> um, I think, okay, so I think that Venom would attach to the... Not really a specific emotion. I think he would attach to this idea or this 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 emotion that uh, Vader has for for control. Okay. Like, okay. Obviously, the 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 desire to control his own fate, his own destiny, his own his own will. Yeah. Um, is what essentially causes him to to push you know Palpatine or throw him over the over the bridge. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I think he would attach to that. So his desire for control is what would is what. The symbiote so would, you would think attach the Venom to symbiote, like Darth Venom. Yes, would basically kill Palpatine. Yes, but mm -hmm. also kill Luke and just control the galaxy. I think himself. he would take Luke captive. Oh, I can see that. He yes. would, Luke would become Carnage. Yeah, I was gonna say yes. Luke he would, would give yeah. birth to a new symbiote. It'd be Mania and, or Carnage, exactly, or something. and that yes. would be him like truly turning Luke to his side. But then Luke still rebels because he's Carnage and starts doing his own stuff. I think would they still that's, use okay. lightsabers, okay. though, is the question. Oh, Absolutely. Point, they, oh, yes. Yeah, dude, could you imagine oh, that? Oh, yes. Whoa, it's like three of them with tendrils. But <laughs> would, it, like, would a lightsaber be like, be like a true, true weakness? No, then? it'd be like Grievous. Because of the heat. No, I don't think so. I mean, it would still be deadly no. No. no, not at all. It yeah, doesn't no. emit heat, though. Like, you actually have to touch a target. Right. Yeah. That's why you can bring it so close God, to your face. The science of a lightsaber. Yeah, I swear. <laughs> the uh, science, science of a lightsaber. <laughs> uh, Which changes depending on... It can cut through a door and then it can't even cut a yes. rod. Like, I, I yeah, I know. It's amazing. I, I think you would actually... You would end up with Emperor... Ve you would end up with Emperor uh, Venom, whatever you want to call him. It would just be, he, so he would not, just not, take not over. Darth Venom, Emperor Venom. Emperor yeah. Venom. With, yes, with absolutely. With Carnage Skywalker. Yes, with Carnage Skywalker. A few years down the line... I think he would be a prisoner for a long time, and that's what... Can we write... Yes. He would not... He yes. wouldn't be... If he was Carnage, though, he would truly revert back to Starkiller. <laughs> Who? Because that was oh, his Star original Killer. name. Who? And then they had... Skywalker was originally going to be Star Oh, Killer, that's right. I thought we were changed talking changed about uh, Carnage. I was like, Carnage? Well, was oh, no. there, is a, there is a game no. of Star Killer that was put yes. into canon from video games. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. It was from canon by Disney. Okay, no, I, I thought you were talking like, about Carnage. I was like, would, I don't Carnage remember. would turn Luke Skywalker so evil that they would truly have to change his name back to Luke Sky Killer is what I Oh, yes. Hold on, hold he would, on, he would be tangent. known as the Sky Killer. Just little tangent, which I'm sorry for anybody who watches yes. this for the first yeah. time. Yeah. We're never known for tangents. Um, do no, you guys know about Star Killer? Yeah, do you know? From the games. Do I? Force Unleashed. I've never played them. It's an old game. Well, I know, but that's... Okay. <laughs> okay. It's old. You must have played it. <laughs> 
there are, to be to fair, it's right, an argument that usually works. There is in it's the true. original canon. <laughs> it's true. Okay. The original canon taking okay. place between th uh, four and f no, yeah, three and four. I think. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Um, Darth Vader, in an attempt to kill P Emperor Palpatine, brought on his own apprentice, hmm. who is so strong in the Force that he could even bring down Death Stars. Just by force grabbing and pulling them down. I think I remember seeing a uh, trailer for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. he was so strong. Okay. And then, and then Vader basically sacrifices him to prove his worth to the Emperor. But what he did was, in turn, Vader inadvertently mm -hmm. or or meant to, we don't okay. fully know, made the rebellion because he used Star Killer to enhance and get the rebellion going. Mm. Gotcha. Okay. So just yeah. a cool. Yeah. I did not know. You that. should look him up. He's really cool. Yeah. I really and the actor want this to be a thing. Game is like huge Star Wars. Oh, he was. Uh, um, He's also in. Uh, he was in Battlestar. Huh? He was in Battlestar Galactica, right? I don't think so, but he might, no, he may have been. Yeah, I think, yeah, he was. Uh, Tyrrell. He loves. He loves sci-fi shit. So. Yeah. Okay. You know what I, I just remember realized? that being a big deal. The comics. Doesn't Marvel do both Star Wars yes. and Venom? Yeah. Or like they could, yeah, they, they, they they could, could definitely do this. do this. this if could be you're a one watching off. this, yes. please do that. I would, that would <laughs> yeah. be a crossover that would sell. And that is when you get millions. that's when you get Han Solo truly just bowing out. It's like, guys, <laughs> yeah. I, pff, I'm this done. Is way like, okay. like, or, Leia, Leia, I love you, but or <laughs> I'm he done. becomes Han Agent Venom. No, no, Han, Han Anti Venom. Agent, yes, that's what I was going for. Anti Venom. Okay. Okay. Yes, Anti Venom is the ability to See, purge people of Venom. Yeah. Ooh. So Han okay. Solo becomes anti-Venom, okay. Scott Luke becomes Carnage, yes. and Darth Vader becomes Venom. That would be quite, Does that that make, would be quite the story. Does that make Leia become Mania? I could totally see that happening. Oh yeah. my gosh, I want this to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just still think the, just the image of a symbiote with force powers is... <laughs> yeah. Well, that's then, like, then you've got so terrifying. Han Solo. Or, Han Solo will be the only one without force powers, yeah. but he can purge you of all yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh. there you go. But actually, I do have to ask this: like, would would the symbiote really be able to control a force, or do you think the symbiote would get in the way of that a little bit? No, here's because what I think: like interference, like it's almost like interference. Yeah, yeah. I could like, see there being a, a form they could use. So I think that the symbiotes would be attaching to the force users because that's how they use the force. But I could see there being a little bit of interference. So in our plot, yes, the way that Luke finally beats Emperor Vader is he's purged of Carnage, and we see how powerful he really is because yeah. he uses the Force to rip it off of Emperor Vader. Yeah, there you go. I just made the story. Oh my god! <laughs> or, or they just have an agreement with the symbiote that like it like pulls back from the hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I just need my hand. Yeah, just give me my hand. There you go. Just let me have that one body part, please. Yeah. Dude, this, hey, this would be can I write so this? good. Yeah, that, that would be really good. Get the right art. You got to get the right artists on board. Oh really, my god, this to really be convey, incredible story to convey the right story. Yeah, just a one-off. Just do don't is, use. Just, just don't use the venom from Space Knight. That's all I ask. Well, no, no. So you you get Emperor he Venom. Looks really he finds weird. out about okay. his kids. He makes Mania Leia, so she kind of sides with him entirely. Carn Luke, but Carnage. he gives Carnage to Luke, who seemingly sides with him. But since he's Carnage, he breaks out of that. He's known as Luke Carnage. Luke that sounds Carnage. amazing. Oh my god! But Luke like the Carnage. whole time, he's fighting against his symbiote, which is yes. which is birthed out of Venom. So it's it's thriving on his need yeah. to fight. And finally, he breaks free of Venom of Carnage. Breaking out because it is carnage. He breaks okay. out, uses the force powers, strips Emperor Venom and uh, Mania of their of their symbiotes. Okay, using the help of Han Solo, uh -huh. anti Venom, who weakens them. He yep. strips them out, and then we get a legless, armless Vader being wait. like a fish. Are, are we ready? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, wait. Epilogue: The Carnage symbiote finds Darth Maul. Oh my God! I think I just peeked and out like, like in the dark. And That's, like, uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Merges him back together. And then you have Boba and... Fett, who hears about these symbiotes and wants it for himself. <laughs> and he's hunting them down. He finally, he finally catches up to them, tells them in his old like Master Chief kind of voice thing that he has going on there that uh, the symbiote is now mine. And then they just push him off to the side. And there's a Sarlacc pit for some reason. <laughs> oh my god! He's like, get out of here! And so he's have like, we have we just made the sequel as well? Yeah. Yes. Like yes, Luke we did. has won, but Darth Maul rises. Darth Maul rises. <laughs> like, would not Darth yeah. Maul be the best yeah. Carnage as well? Oh my god! He already pretty much Carnage is, is like, do you are, are you sure you want to keep these like spider leg things that you got going on yeah. here? And he's like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Give me more! Give me more! <laughs> he's got like twenty legs. It's like a setup. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, okay. Man. All right. Okay. That was good. <laughs> oh, that was good. I'm loving this. Okay. Okay. Let's What's see if we the, get next the next one. one. Ready? Red Hood and Mad Max. 
He'd fit right in. Yeah. <laughs> he would just be in yeah, He'd that, just be that, Red Hood and Mad yeah. Max. Like, yeah, that one doesn't require that much creativity. It's just, yeah. hey, you're here now. And he's like, okay. He would, I mean, I, <laughs> he, would, he would dominate. I mean, he would just dominate. Oh, yeah. I can totally see that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. He would just be driving around. Yeah. Like, he would be the feared guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, I could see, what, what, what was the main character? It's Max, isn't yeah, it? No. Yeah, uh, I thought so. What is his character? The version, the main character. It's not Max, is it? thought it was. We'll just call him Max no. for the sake of this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll just call for him Max. Yeah. Whoever, whoever the main character. The one. Yeah, it's right. like Tom oh. Hardy says like no words. Yeah. Oh, well then it can't be Red Hood. No, no, no. He's no, not known saying, for no, not no, talking. No, Red no, Hood's no, just Red in Hood, the universe. So Red Hood, let's say Red Hood got dropped in this universe yeah. before the whole Mad Max thing happened. Right. Okay. Um, if you've seen the latest one. Oh, he would be the one to like he'd create become, like, his own empire yeah. thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's so, Red Hood territory. Yeah, yeah. Hey, don't go on the Red yeah. Hood territory. Yeah. It's in no. the all of his gang members. He would just call it the red, red zone. Heads. The red zone. Like his oh, entire yes. land would be the red zone the and red everyone zone. would be like, yeah. you don't go near the red zone. No, <laughs> no one goes near the yeah. red zone. Welcome to the Red Hood Dome. <laughs> 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 I like that you made it's, that up as well. It's a dome yeah. that literally is just a giant red yes. hood. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, sadly, I think for the sake, because we would make Red Hood be a villain, I think he would have to lose at the end of this. Would we, which would Red we? Hood would we give him? Like the classic, just like the weirdest. I think we would need to for the sake of Mad Max. It'd have to be the giant weird yeah. dome. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then we find out that we, the whole story we've been thinking it's Red Hood, uh-huh. it's actually Joker. And oh, and, and Red, the Hood Red Hood is, a is the one. Oh no, he's no, no, the Red one that's like in the trying to. And Max finds him. Yes. Freeing him. Yeah. So then it's Red Hood and Max going against Joker. And Red the pers- Hood made the Empire. Joker okay. comes in, yep. takes it over, but puts on the hood. The there the Mad go. Max that saves him is actually Arsenal. Oh, so it's Arsenal and Red Hood. Arsenal and Red Hood versus the Joker. Versus the okay. Joker. Here's my ignorance speaking. Who's Arsenal? Arsenal is Red Arrow, basically. Green Arrow sidekick. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. They're both kind of like gotcha. the rejects of the I always, Okay. Whenever okay. I think of the two of them, I think of when they were roommates. Yes. And it, it was just super funny. Like, uh, he's in the shower or something, and, like, Arsenal comes in and just starts messing with him. And it's, yeah. it's good stuff. So anyway, uh, yeah, no, so we have Red Hood and Arsenal versus the Joker. And we can even hint at it. We can foreshadow. Oh, yeah. Red Hood used to be a great leader. And then he just went crazy one yeah, day. Yeah, one day. Right. Something changed. just this minute. Yeah. Yeah, it's he just decided mystery, to yeah. change his Red Hood uh-huh. for some reason. He felt the taller the hood, the more power it showed. Yes. And that's why he went to the tall hood instead of just the okay. mask. We okay. had one come in, but I'm going to change it up to something that Gary knows. Because you have not seen Westworld, have you? I have not. Okay. No. How about Vision and Blade Runner? Ooh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> How would oh that work? Are you a replicant? What's a replicant? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a human. I, well, I fit the description. <laughs> but, but I thought it was an android. But I yeah. thought it was an android. <laughs> yeah. He, he just has a, a, the whole movie shows him having an existential crisis. Yeah. <laughs> am I a replicant or an android? Yeah, I don't what know. Am I? What am Everything's I? Everything's happening in the background. <laughs> what is Everyone's, what? It's like, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's just always in the back. Turns he's out just he's the, the origin. Back. He's the very first replicant. Oh! Made by Ultron is. Made Vision. And Ultron went off to the pasture to sign off. Mm. And then Vision built all the replicants. And something happened mm. where the more he created, it splintered his mind into the replicants. And that's why he forgets who he is. And whether or not he is a replicant or not. Ooh! There you go. What do you think, Gary? I like it. Okay. <laughs> Approved. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, there was one that came by that I wanted to see that I thought was a really good one, and now I've lost it, and it's gone, and it's gone. <laughs> oh, no. Dante, come on. Dante, Dante, you're failing us, buddy. This Although, is- I, I, I think that uh, Vision would just become, like, the best Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He would just, he would... I mean, they would recognize, like, well, you're not really a replicant, but you know that you're a machine. We know that you're not human, but you're a good guy. Yeah. So... Or at least you appear to be. Yeah. So Harrison Ford, Uh. sorry, you're out of a job. Like, Vision's going to take over. God. I'm really liking yeah. this topic. Yeah. We yeah. should sometimes do more Sometimes these topics these. can be very good, and sometimes these topics can be very poor. I'm going to yeah. say right now, next time we should do uh, the same concept, but into fantasy worlds. 
since Ooh, we're doing yeah. sci-fi right now. I like, oh, like, I like, I like mixing these things. Yeah. Yeah. One guy's been bringing up John Constantine constantly, but there's one in particular that mm. I enjoyed. Let's hear it. He's mentioned John Constantine in Walking Dead. He's mentioned John Constantine okay. in like other things. But this one I liked. John Constantine of Hellblazer okay. in X-Files. <laughs> that is the perfect hey. fit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. That gosh. is amazing. Yes. It also just made X-Files more frightening. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how. Because you have the two agents yeah. at all times trying to figure it out. And every time they get close, instead of like the smoking man, it's, it's just John, John. Constantine. He's just like smoking, of yeah. course. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Mulder, it's you again. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah. You're getting really close, but the the demons just left. <laughs> right. You're so slow, man. So weird. Yeah. I was I was here an hour. If you were an hour ago, yeah. if you had showed up an hour ago, and then Scully runs up. Oh, is, is that the one that still doesn't believe in any of this? Yeah. Is yeah. she daft? Yeah. <laughs> she, so, so you're telling me, you're telling me, this is the Keanu Reeves version yeah. in my mind of, uh, of John Constantine. You're telling me that she's seen aliens. <laughs> she's seen a guy that can stretch and like fit into anything. <laughs> she's seen a lot of crazy stuff and she still doesn't believe. Yeah. Why are you, why? Oh, you like her. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you like her. yeah, you have a crush on her. Oh, no, but the FBI put us together. Yeah. I, I don't buy that. Yeah. I don't. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's a great, that's brilliant. What that's if, a brilliant what fit. What if, because this is John Constantine mm-hmm. and he's known, Dan will vouch because he's read John Constantine's stuff mm-hmm. that I have. Okay. Everyone close to John Constantine dies. Oh, yeah, because he manipulates everything for his own benefit. So using much. the terrible conclusion yeah. to the original X-Files with yes. the aliens. The whole thing is a manipulation from John Constantine. Okay. So that he can stop the aliens, but Mulder and Scully end up dying. I can see that. That would yeah. definitely happen. Yeah, I can see that. At the end of the whole thing, the two of them die, and you just... But the aliens are also dead. Mm-hmm. Right. And it just cuts at, like, the end of the last season, last episode. We don't fully understand who John Constantine is. It just cuts to him, light the cigarette. Bloody hell. And he just walks away. And it's, it's yeah. over. It's, it's Just walks away. He's the only survivor. The Wait, smoke, did... up, like, from his cigarette appears... Covers him and he disappears. I was thinking he'd just and bum a smoke it. from the smoking man. Yes! Smoking like, man comes yeah. by and he's like, it's all been perfect. And constantly he's like, can I, can I get a smoke from you? <laughs> can I bum one of those? Can, can I bum one of those? Lights you it. really think you did all this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, would be, really that would be incredible. You did this. Mm-hmm. Let me show you something. And he opens a portal and demons come out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> He totally oh, man. No, no. Like, you think aliens yeah. are the worst things ever? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Let me open no, this. Yeah. Come X, with me. Let me open this <laughs> X file me. for you. Like, does something to a wall. The door opens. Hell flames this coming out. Come oh, with yeah. me. He's just walking. And he's like, I'm not going I mean, no, in there. No, no smoking like, man would quit. Oh, no, no. Could yeah, you see, could you see this, though? He opens the door. Flames coming out. You, I just, I, this is what I pictured the ending. Mm-hmm. John Costley looks at me. He's like, is that hell? And John's like, yeah. And he goes, I'm not going in there. And he goes, oh, we'll be there eventually either way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Credits. Or just not yet. Oh. He says, yeah, not yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good. John You've Constantine. You've been there all along. Oh, man. Okay. So if that happened, like in the series, people would still love X Files, but they would just, there would be constant demand for more John Constantine. Oh, there would. Oh, yeah. They would just, that's all anybody would want. Yeah. That's, uh, that's brilliant. I'm, Okay, let's. Bring these all on. would work great as like yeah. comic book like crossovers. That's so part of genius. now that we're talking about these, part of me is wondering if like someone was watching the X Files and they were like, John Constantine. It just fits. This could work. It's I'm gonna make so well. Like 70s, so no. Yeah, he's, he was around okay, a lot longer. Ones. Yeah. Uh, this is a funny one. Blade okay. in Ghostbusters. Blade. <laughs> Blade in Ghostbusters. <laughs> he would be the most miserable. <laughs> Person wait, 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 in Ghostbusters. Okay. New Don't, Ghostbusters or old Ghostbusters? Old. Okay. All right. Yeah, classic. The old the good classic. Ones. Yeah. The cla- yeah. Classic. <laughs> the Bill Murray, one. like Bill Murray and Blade becoming best friends, or whatever <laughs> oh his character's gosh. name was. Yeah. Don't cross the blades. Don't uh, cross there's, a, there's another one that came up. Uh, Batman and Doctor Who, but that happened when Grant Morrison put Batman through time travel. Yeah. Well, uh, sort of. No, Batman and Doctor Who. I saw one. Well. I no, saw one earlier that was Doctor Who and Doctor Strange. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be amazing. a great that one because it's like they they both kind of they would both be trying to one up each other yeah. the whole time. Oh, incredibly! Oh, they so. would they would have like a ten minute conversation about their like real names. <laughs> <laughs> like like who are you? I'm the Doctor. Doctor Who. Yeah, everybody says that. Who are you? I'm Doctor Strange. Let's just stop messing <laughs> yeah. with each other. Can okay. we just like let's be real? Yeah. Oh, let's that that would be incredible. 
Let's cut the shit real I quick. Like what is your name? Okay. Gary, I like do me a favor. Yes. Real quick, another, another Gary moment that Gary's messing up on. What? When we're setting up, can we remember to plug the laptop in? Well, yeah. <laughs> it's got a battery. It's dead. It's dying. It says it's going to show. Oh, it. okay. I thought, okay. <laughs> Why is it unplugged? This another moment of Gary messing time. up. This is a it was just a hilarious moment to go. Can we plug it in? <laughs> I set up lights and cameras and mics and stuff. I didn't think about the laptop. Oh, good. There's an open plug. <sighs> okay. We we unplug it. The <laughs> camera oh, no, shut down. They may figure out that we also use this for comics tonight. No. <laughs> The magic is gone. The magic is gone. We're actually going to change the set scene we're talking about. Possibly just putting a bunch Possibly, of yeah. stuff back yeah. in. I think that'd be great. Yeah, it's it's going to be fun. Yeah. We should blow up like variant covers and make Ooh. like posters out of them. Yeah. I have a feeling that Benny's going to want us to blow up the that one panel from Detective Comics. Yes. The, which one? The, the one, one with I him. exist in comics. Oh, the of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just behind. <laughs> okay, I just really okay. I want to get back to Blade and Ghostbusters. Okay, okay. I think in but in Ghostbusters he would feel useless. Yeah, because they're not vampires. That's what I'm thinking. It would be like, too easy. Like, yeah, dude, you're amazing. I got a but better one. I got a better that? one. This What's... came up across okay. from. Uh, I'm going to start trying to get the names in there now. But the execution from our Twitch chat says okay. Tony Stark in Rick and Morty. <laughs> oh my god. I know you're not too familiar with Rick and Morty. I'm not, no. But Dan is. Two but... super smart drunks. <laughs> he hasn't been drunk since like the 90s, right? Who? No, I Tony guess Stark? Stark. I've always been. Literally yeah, in the last, in one true. of the recent ones, he gets yeah. a new body back and they're talking about be, him like being an alcoholic and he's like, well, that's never going to go away. <laughs> that's, that's true. He's, <laughs> like, he's like, there's going to be a constant battle with my liver and like liquor yeah. nowadays. Like, yeah. But that would be... Huh. That would be so. I feel like that would be one where they would be complete enemies. They would just be arguing the whole time. It would time. always Tony be them Stark going. Would get his hands on a portal gun somehow, yes. and it would just be him and Rick going to each area, messing with each other, and Morty being like, "Come on, Rick! What? Yeah. What's going on here, Rick? Uh, what, Tony, Mister Stark?" Uh, can I and then Rhodey would be like, "Tony, why are we doing this, Tony?" <laughs> He has a Rhodey as his Morty. I feel like he wouldn't get his hands on a portal oh, gun. It would be a Rick is the smartest man in the universe, in the multiverse, and Tony sees him use a portal gun, creates his own, and then it becomes they somehow cross paths. And Rick's like, how did you get a hold of my stuff? I made this myself because no. I'm the smartest man in the universe. And then it becomes a oh, yeah. contest a total, of yeah, who can contest. create I got the, the better craziest thing. Yeah. The initial. Tony's sitting there with the Avengers telling them how they're going to beat Ultron because he's the smartest man in the universe. Mm -hmm. And he's going to beat Ultron. The portal opens. Rick comes out. <clears throat> smartest man in the universe. <laughs> uh, yeah, here's the kill switch for Ultron. And then he portals out and leaves. And Tony's just like... Yeah. <laughs> and so he makes a portal gun to compete with Rick Sanchez. Yeah. I just realized <laughs> that you brought this topic up because it's the o probably one of the only times that the phrase, and a portal opens, <laughs> was is a, the most relevant thing. Yeah, it was actually <laughs> right, appropriate. I got, they gave us another one. Okay. Kid Speedster gave this one for you, and I know it's exactly for Dan, so it's not okay. even us. Okay. okay. But Honey Badger and Futurama. <laughs> that is a very Honey Dan Badger combo. In that, is a, that is a Dan combo. Oh my gosh, that would be so great because it would be his eyes lit up. It's I know. Well, it's <laughs> her <laughs> humor. It's her yeah. humor with like imagine her Fry and Bender just going on their shenanigans of just messing with each other. Honey Badger's doing her stuff of just oh my gosh, that would be so fun. Okay, here's yeah. another one. This one's for you. Okay. Okay. Because you're a Ghostbusters Ready. fan, right? We're going to try again with the Ghostbusters. Yeah, I mean, I like with the, the more relevant yeah. one. Yeah, well, Shadowcat okay. says Ghost Rider and Ghostbusters. That would work well. <laughs> that would work really Could you well. Could The Ghostbusters get in, they're setting so, up the traps and everything, and then just... Yeah. What are you guys doing? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they would be like, do we catch you? Or do we catch that? Yeah. Are you going to... Because if we catch him, we still have jobs. <laughs> If we if we if we don't catch him, we do a good thing, but we're out of work. <laughs> we're out of work. So <laughs> let's catch it. Are, yeah. Who do we catch? You're both ghostly. <laughs> You're both ghostly. You're oh frightening. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> Goblin says that's not even sci-fi, but I'll give it to Dan. Wolverine and American Dad. 
<laughs> There's some sci-fi elements. There's an alien, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, alien sci-fi. Yeah, it let's, works. Let's go with it. Wolverine and American Dad. <laughs> that would just... I don't even know what would happen. He would just leave. Wolverine would just be like... I don't have time for this. I'm going to Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things make I'm, sense I'm Cana- in Canada. I'm Canadian. Oh! Okay. Patrick, uh, Pat, Paul Captain has a good one. Okay. okay. Loki. This isn't sci fi, but I'll take it. Okay. Loki and Game of Thrones. See, this would be great for the next he, episode, I'm just going to say. Yes. Okay, so we'll leave fantasy. it for that. Because that, the, when oh, we do yes. superheroes in fantasy worlds, that would be perfect. I think, okay. okay, that's a great combo. Loki in any fantasy setting. Yeah. Let's put Loki in Aliens. What the hell? He, oh, Loki would try to build an army. <laughs> He'd try to build an army of xenomorphs. I could see that. Yes. I feel like, yeah. I feel like he would, and I Loki need... would be the reason there's the chest bursters. Mm-hmm. He would be like, oh, this alien is it's so scary, so great. I'm going to make it better. We're going to get mini versions, and they're going to pop out of people's stomachs. <laughs> he, would, it okay. it he would find a way to tame one. That's a, I mean, yeah. let's be honest. Why else it would it have, have a little like, mouth? It would have like a cat bell. <laughs> and it, oh yeah, he'd it's have like, ding ling ling. Okay. okay. Why, how did he get in the vents again? <laughs> All right. One of our oldest, oldest watchers over on on YouTube, okay. the oldest watchers here on Twitch. Okay. He's been dying, and he okay. hasn't given me a good one. So I'm gonna let you guys pick where we put them. Okay. The, Tevia wants the super oh, sons okay. in something. So super what would they sons. fit with? Super it's, Sons. It's, it's, you know, the Super Sons are Superboy. Yes. And Robin. And right. Yes. The children yep. of the. Yep. I can't think of one that they would fit in. In a sci-fi universe? Yeah. That is a, that's a tough one. Yeah, because they wouldn't fit well, I don't think, with a lot of, a lot of because he's throwing every idea in the, in the, right. the sun out there. Oh, I know what they would fit in immediately. What? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I could see oh, that. Oh, absolutely. Because who else would think to bring a towel but <laughs> Damian Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could see that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that oh man that would be a that good would one be for an them. incredible movie. okay and, yes. and Mopey our mod forever. actually hold on I know it's not sci-fi <laughs> could you imagine Damien and John in the Goonies yeah that would be a good one that would be a really good one hmm. <laughs> or Stranger Things or Stranger Things I've never watched it oh my God. I know I've never watched Stranger it's Things it's sci-fi man L- you know Literally what okay, anything so anything that's kids based would be hilarious with Super Saiyan yeah, yeah people say it's cool it's relevant it's trending I'm like yeah no I'm, I'm, the, kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. All the I'm kidding. I'm kidding. How are you not? I like things that are relevant occasionally. He likes to be hipster. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm watch it in a couple yeah. of years and be like, guys, have yeah. you seen so Stranger I'm gonna, Things? I'm going to watch this. Has anybody heard of it, though? No, no, no. Yeah. Who, who said that? Someone yeah. said that. Someone said the best combo for the Super Sons. Okay, what's that? I want to give the credit, though. Ian Yayo11. Spy Kids. Oh my That's gosh! <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be perfect. Yep. Yes, the Super Sons and Spy Kids. Oh yeah. yeah they are yeah. the Spy Kids. <laughs> they pretty much are, yeah. I mean, Damien that's alone. Really, yeah, that's great. Oh uh, my gosh. Okay. I now we've got, now we've got all the Robins and the Hardy Boys. <laughs> Just all of them are the Hardy Boys. <laughs> For some reason, matching those up reminded me of that. Okay, let's hear this okay. last one. Well, okay. there's no last one at this point because they seem to be running out. Uh, uh, Paul, uh, Paul, Paul Captain has Hulk in Jurassic Park. <laughs> uh, I would it would, it would Hulk be Hulk versus King Kong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Hulk in Jurassic Park, that would be... Um, oh my God. There's no contest there. <laughs> it would just be his island. <laughs> like, Hulk He's and Godzilla. He's beating down the dinosaurs. They're just afraid of him. Yeah. What yeah. if it was Hulk and Godzilla? Hulk, yeah. Hulk versus Godzilla? Hulk. Or Hulk I is mean, Godzilla against the rest. Hulkzilla? Yeah, it's Hulkzilla. A giant Hulk. Dante yeah. Turtle has one final one I'm going to throw out there, guys. One final okay. one before we wrap okay. up this episode. Okay. Today. Okay. 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 Detective Chimp on the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> 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 we never went to Star Trek. That's amazing to me. Well, I actually was surprised you didn't yeah. crossed over with them twice. I'm ordering the book show, you remember? Oh, that's, oh, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah, so they've already crossed over dozens of times with Star Trek. Okay, but let's do, let's do that real okay. quick then. Let's okay. make up our own. Who do you think would be the best fit other than Green Lanterns? Okay. Gamora. No Nova Corps. I don't think... Okay. I was going to say Gamora. For Star Trek? For some reason. Yeah, like, who, 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 who would reason, fit I think Star Gamora. Trek? No, you know what? Not Gamora. 
I, I, my vote, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Yo, yeah, absolutely. They, just, yeah. they, they, yeah. they bump the, the Enterprise. Yeah. They bump it. It's like a they fender bump bender. Into the <laughs> it's like a fender it's bender. A fender bender. In space. Oh man! <laughs> they're just like stop, 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 stop. And Rob is like, what, "What are you doing over there? We're gonna hit this thing!" And then there's like, "Boop!" <laughs> you would have Q come in and like oh. argue with them about like who's the comedic relief. It's like <laughs> you guys can't be here. I'm the comedic relief. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. And then of course like you have yeah. uh, Chris Spock. Pratt. You have Star Star Lord. Yep. Arguing with Captain Picard because I'm going to go with Next Gen. They're my favorites. Oh, absolutely. For Our, some reason, I think go. Groot talking to Spock would be hilarious. <laughs> I am Groot. Spock would figure out the language in like yes. five minutes. He totally would. Yeah. And they would have the yeah. most in-depth conversation. And everyone else would just see it as Spock talking to him, I am Groot. And he would talk I in it Groot. as well. Yeah. He would talk back. I am Groot. I am Groot. He, yeah, he'd raise his little eyebrow. I am Groot. That, that, so next gen, I think, would just be him and Picard arguing. But I think the best combo Star Trek to go with Guardians, Voyager. Because yeah. they're lost. They're lost. That's true. So they could bump into yep. the Guardians that have no yep. idea what's going on. Mm-hmm. You would have, okay, so you would have Tom Paris and Star Lord arguing about who's a better pilot. <laughs> you would have Groot talking to Tuvok, who's their like the resident, you know, yeah, the resident Spock. Uh, <laughs> the resident Spock, because every series needs one. Yeah. That's a good combo. I like that. And then but there's and no, then, there's, and have to fight the Borg in that. Yeah. But it'd be the Borg either overrun by the, the Zoidberg. Clintar, no, it'd be, it'd be the Borg overrun by the Clintar, <laughs> the or the Skrulls have been have been taken over by the Borg. Mm. Oh, that's why the Guardians are now involved. Yes, Voyager uh-huh. sees a new race that they don't yes. recognize that seem the to have shape shifting abilities. Yes, and the Guardians end up fender bendering with the Voyager ship. Yep. I like the fender bender meeting. Oh yeah, I, absolutely. That's, I mean, how else would they do yeah. it? There's no other yeah. way. Yeah, that I they didn't know you were stopping. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I. This is just an honorable mention. I would also love to see the Guardians run into Han Solo and Chewbacca. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I Devon or the, yeah. Wagoner. He's got one last one that okay. I think okay. deems total. Okay, yeah. let's hear it. Booster Gold, the okay. resident DC time traveling messes everything up character. Mm-hmm. See if you can guess where, where I'm going to get in. Are you going to say Doctor Who? Yes. Mm. Doctor Who and Booster Gold. That would be funny. <laughs> that would be, Wait, that okay, would be one got... of those ones where they honestly wouldn't ever actually interact. It would it just would, be while they're time traveling, the other one would just appear doing something completely no, different in the background. No, I could see Booster messing up the timeline and Doctor Who showing up going, what happened D- here? Stop doing this. <laughs> Skeets, huh. get your guy in order. Come on, man. Huh. You don't like that with, one? No, no. With which Doctor? Which with, Doctor okay. are we talking? Tenet, no, I, Tenet, Tenet, I think, would no, be trying to help him. I think yes. with Booster, he would go through all of them and constantly question his sanity of, you're... You were completely different last time we ran into <laughs> yeah. each other. What the hell's going on here? Yeah. yeah, he would eventually. I think he would like um, mess with them because he's time traveling. He's the they reason would ask, the doctor's no, changed. They would ask, uh, like, you know, well, well, who are you? So he'll just say, "I'm the doctor." And they're like, <laughs> "Wait, what?" <laughs> All right, guys, this has been a fun theory crafting episode. I think. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of fun. It turned into a lot more fun. We were, yeah. Whenever, whenever we, we had to come up with the topic in a hurry because uh, Rob's in, uh, mm-hmm. in, inability to be mm-hmm. here today. Uh, yep. But I always found it funny. This was a really good one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Give us other ideas in the comments down below as to what other theory crafting we can do. We do take your mm-hmm. ideas. We do run with them. Yeah. Um, don't forget, this episode is brought to you by Bombfell. You can check the link down below. It's also brought to you by our Patreon, patreon.com slash comic story, where we bring you about six different podcasts and early access to our videos. And it is streamed live on Twitch, as you can tell by me going through the people in the Twitch chat today. Every Thursday afternoon, we film normally one to three episodes of this at a time, giving you early access to them all on our Patreon. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, if you want to talk to Dan more directly, you can go find him over at Dante Editor on Twitter or yes. at our gaming channel, Eligible Monster, or right here on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Gary, you can find him at Gary Cam, Gary Cam 4 on Twitter. He's also at the channel, which he renamed, and I don't know. Film Circuit. Yes. On and YouTube. He's making his I love own that show name. based Thank around sci fi yeah. and discussing sci fi and things like that called yep. BBM Gary and various other projects over there. So you can go check him out. Link to that will be down below as well. I hope you guys yep. enjoyed, and we will see you next episode. Of the R and B E or the Benny experiment when it stands wrong. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. I have a bruise on my arm because someone decided to punch me thirty-two times in the exact same spot. I am very good. Who is at that? Hmm. I take boxing oh, classes. Well, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Look at that, Gary. You got it. Yeah, you get it. Anyone? It's like a decent. See anything? <laughs> oh. 
It's I'm, what, sure, it's, I'm no, sure. It's okay. Not a fucking, okay. I'm going to tell you what I tell. I'm not my, saying okay. it's like a bad bruise. I'm, I'm going to tell you it's what I. A bruise. I'm going to tell you what I tell my daughter every time. She Suck it bruise? up, bitch. No, every time. No. Whoa. No, you don't say that. I don't say that. I, oh, sorry. So, suck it up, brat. I know it's it. Better. It probably hurt, but you're not hurt. No, I know. That's all. That's all. That, that was it. I wasn't going anywhere with that. We were waiting for you to go somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it was it's more of just one of those ones where I looked in the mirror and I'm like, my, my only reaction wasn't like, oh, yeah. it's just, damn it, Benny. <laughs> yeah. The best part was like, I cornered him in the, in the corner of the hallway. Yeah. And he's like, stop, stop. <laughs> I didn't want to start. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to start kicking you now. Cause that's yeah. the only way I can outrange you. But it was, it, the way he was saying it was so funny. Even, uh-huh. even Houston started it's laughing. It's just like, stop, stop, stop. 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 <laughs> you know, that makes it worse, right? I know, <laughs> but it was still just one of those moments where I'm like, just stop. Just stop it. You won't it, Benny. because you're asking like that. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Next time, I'm just going to kick him in the gut. I grew up with two brothers. Solar plexus we were, shot. we were the kind of brothers that would all watch wrestling and then be like, we can do that. See, ours we were just were, talking about I grew that. up with two brothers as well, older brothers. And uh, our thing was like Jean-Claude movies. We'd watch Bloodsport and then we'd go fight. Yeah. Pretend fight. And then it would turn into a real fight because we somebody went too far. We yeah. would watch the WWF before they yeah. became the WWE. I remember those days. And it was the Hardy Boys yeah. versus the Dudleys. And me and my brother would be like, we're the Hardy Boys. We'd like climb up on things and like jump off. And hmm. he cut my finger off with scissors. Um, he has kicked, like this fingernail grows weird. You can see it. Doesn't it look weird? Yeah. It's because he kicked it and the fingernail came out the back of my finger. Ha. Huh. <laughs> we never went yeah, that man. far. Yeah. We got pretty bad. You guys like invented backyard wrestling. Then. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't know that was even possible, but the fingernail went through the back of yeah. the finger. Mm. So now it grows, it grows yeah. what I call my mutant ability because it grows straight out now. So it's like, I, like if I Your let it Meg grow, from that one episode. It's like a knife. Can... It's like, cha! I, uh, I have one finger that can turn into things. The closest I, or the most biggest injury I got from my brother was I had pushed him into, uh, you know, like when you had a fireplace, you had like the fence yeah. mm-hmm. in front of it. He, I pushed him into that and he cut himself. So he got our toy Aladdin sword and smacked me on the head and cracked my skull open. Oof. Ow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my brother Andy knocked out my you know, brother that's a Daniel's very tooth equal fighting. reaction. My brothers were comparatively gentle with me. Uh, <laughs> I threw, I threw yeah. Andy into the wall so hard, I broke his ankle. Ow. It was an ankle or something. It was like something lower, like leg portion. Huh. Of all things to break from getting was, thrown like, into the wall. Wow, it's like his leg just hit it just right. Did you oh. pick him up and then like... Oh, no. Launch. So I'm the big guy in the family. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so... Really? Yeah. Well, oh, that, see, shocker. I got to go into this story because I got to go in from the military. I think I may have told you this one. The time that I beat on a private... Private's a rank in the military. <laughs> oh, yes. No, that was the one the where he was full of himself. Me? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, my brother though, he came at me and we were fighting and I'm big, I'm like, before I learned how to fight, mm-hmm. my tactic was throw you off kind of at the situation. Right. And I chucked him off down the hallway into the wall. <laughs> it's a reasonable solution. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but no, so the, uh, for those guys who don't know, there was, in the military they teach you, I don't remember what it's called, but it's the, it's the, the Grady MMA thing. What's that one? The MMA. Style of fighting. It's oh, the cage fighting. It's but it's it's like it's a side. Is they call it something, and they they don't teach you the fully how to do it. But it's basically like take them to the ground, put them in a hold, and then you're done. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, for this. There's I three levels of the military. Yes, I know what you're talking jiu-jitsu? about. No, it's 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 Grady Jiu-Jitsu though. Krav Maga. No, it's like it's like he made his own, which okay. is like a cross between them all, and it's how gotcha. he won MMA. So it's a mixed martial yeah, arts. Yeah, it's a mixed martial arts, but they had an official name for it. I don't remember what it's nah, called. Grady M A G M A. Yeah, it's something like that. But anyway. With the, in the military, I was at this time an E4, which is a specialist. Yeah, I'd been in for a while. I, you know, everyone knew who I was. I'm the big guy, and I was always I got to level two in that. When you first get in the military, they teach you three days of level one, mm-hmm. and every little kid who's 18 to 19 was like, "I am the most badass mofo out there right now. Oh, yeah. You've taught me how to fight. Yeah. I can take you all down." Yeah. Every Gracie Jiu Jitsu, that, yeah, there you go. 100 at once. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, that's exa- exactly the yeah. attitude. Like, I am so tough. I am a Spartan now. Because what they do <laughs> is they'll stick you in this, like, classroom with, like, 30 people and you face off against each other with your yeah. three days of lessons. Yeah. Oh, I won. I'm amazing. I know how the techniques work. 
So when we were in the military, they had this thing where they'd be like, um, like the, the new privates that joined the military would love to challenge the older guys that they thought they could beat. <laughs> At this period, I was kind of transitioning between where I was in the military. So I wasn't working out nearly as much, you know, put on a couple pounds. Uh, I was, I was just kind of, I was the guy that basically would, they would have just watched the barracks. Mm -hmm. Like my job was uh, staff duties, what they call it. And you're like, oh, Dan, you're going to sit here at this desk, at this very desk mm -hmm. from 9 a.m. until 9 a.m. And every hour I want you to get up and check all the doors and make sure they're secure. And that, and that was it. That's what you did. That was staff duty. So it was the mm -hmm. most boring thing in the world. Yeah. But I'd be guarding barracks. So like this, this young private comes in. And he's like, Potter, I hear that you're, like, really good at fighting. Like, really good at, at doing this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, I've done quite well with it. And he's like, I want to challenge you. <laughs> I'm like, if you want. Why? I'm like, yeah. where and when? He goes, right here, right now, in this hallway. Because <laughs> yeah. that'll end well for <laughs> So the yeah. hallway is Don't probably, worry, there's not walls very close. They're to like these. six yeah. feet apart. They're like you can't even lay down straight across on them. They're because it's military yeah. barracks. They're very, very close. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> come at me, <laughs> bro. Cause, well, because <laughs> one of the things they teach you is to not instigate. Yeah. It's all counters. Like yeah, <laughs> the, the whole point of when you learn to fight is the biggest thing is. Don't get into the fight. Yeah. That's like the biggest thing they teach you is how to well, avoid fighting, but then like how to deal with it if they the continue. Well, it. that's the thing is the it first move. Is, yeah, the, the first situation. move is like the first mistake. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he's like, yeah. okay. Now the way what they teach you is they don't charge you punching or anything. That's right. It's all grapples. Yeah. So he comes in to grapple me. Now bear in mind, this dude is probably weighs as much as Dan does. He's like five six. About as scrawny as you with a little more muscle because he's been doing push-ups like crazy. Yeah, in military. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you you come at me. <laughs> I, would, I would need one very lucky shot. <laughs> yeah. And he goes to grapple me by the shoulders, and I immediately just grab him and just throw him up. <laughs> That's his approach? That's, it's not even what they teach you. Yeah. No. Because they no. teach you. The you usually level one, at least they, sweep the leg. Level one, they teach you to take him to the ground and get him in a hold. So his idea is to get me to the ground. Now, bear in mind, level one, they also don't teach you how to start this stuff standing up. Yeah. They teach you on your knees. Yeah. Because you're because you're supposed to already be mostly on the ground. Yeah. So my counter's not even a proper one, but he comes straight at me and I just throw him up. <laughs> yeah. So he comes at me again. Well, good on him for the... <laughs> His, the dedication. His, yeah, his tenacity is inspiring. <laughs> he gets back, he's like, whoa. And he just comes at me again with the same maneuver. Huh. So I toss him up. <laughs> and he's like, all right, all right. So can we just start this on our knees? <laughs> can we start this on our oh knees? Oh my gosh. Hey, yeah. I want to fight you. Get on your knees yeah. first. <laughs> yeah. I would like you Actually, to- Actually, can you, yeah. you get in this position? Let me start like this. Okay, now let's fight. Yeah. I would like you to start at a disadvantage. <laughs> so Please. I'm like, okay, I'll even let you get prepared to get into the chokehold. <laughs> oh but gosh. the problem is, there are so many problems with that. Because like, you ahead. know what he's going to do. Right. It's exactly so you already know how you're going to counter. I, <laughs> so like, my favorite thing about stuff like that is it's kids going, I just took three days of this. Let me challenge the guy who I know has had the exact same training, <laughs> exactly. but for a much longer period of oh, time, yeah. Oh, yeah. and even has a reputation <laughs> at being a good fighter. Yeah. So I'm not gonna do anything to you, but he gets like, you're on your knees, right? Mm -hmm. And he comes in and he's like, okay. And he gets ready like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, let me guess, you well, grabbed him arm, arm and threw him over your shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> threw him over my shoulder. Then I reminded him as I'm twisting him around, mm -hmm. In the real world, there's no pre-setups. No. I then, not even a move they teach you, because this is only six feet, and now I have somebody's body right behind my back as oh, I'm putting I it hold. I brace my legs on the opposite wall and just start pressing against him. There you go. <laughs> and I'm like, if you can get out of this, I'll declare you the winner. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, oh, oh. 
tap out, tap out. Yeah, the thing people tend to forget is that training, are, it's, it's like rules. You learn the rules of the fight. It's, it's but like you are guidelines. Always, they're like guidelines. <laughs> but you are always free to break the rules. <laughs> exactly. No one's going to fight by the rules. And that's exactly what my point you know, was. Like, this isn't one of the moves. But I don't see I'm you winning. Recovering. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh man. Let's be honest. In a real fight, there's no such thing as playing dirty. Oh no, there no, isn't. No, no, it's, it's all fight. It's all dirty. You're, yeah. yeah. That's, In that's a you're real doing. fight, there's no prep and get ready and yeah. shit like that. No. Yeah. There's Swift and overwhelming. Anytime force. I've don't gotten even into, challenging. Just go for it. Yeah. Anytime I've gotten into a real fight, like a real fight, fight, not like we're right. going to challenge and make this fair, mm-hmm. but a legit fight, I always go for the cheap ass move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause like some of the like I've had people come up to me in the, like in bar fights and shit, and they'll just be like, and I'll just be like, okay, bam. Yeah, <laughs> that was our not punches. like. I, now yeah, I hit you I mean, in the nuts. Not, you're on the ground. Yeah. That wasn't fair. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, there's always the here's, here's a tip, yeah. guys. Even those people often go, ah, oh, you can't hit him in the balls. Hit him in the balls. Hit him in the balls. Uh, it's a fight. You're yeah, gonna get hit. It. When, if you're like, legit yeah. fighting me, no holds bar. Yeah. yeah. Also, here's another thing to keep in mind. If you hit someone in the balls. It does not guarantee they're gonna go down right away. Oh, oh no. no! I no. learned about uh, there was a guy when I when I uh, taught martial arts. There was another teacher whose friend was a bouncer, mm-hmm. and the way he would often like take guys out of the bar is he would literally just drop and just punch him extremely hard in the nuts, and they would just drop and he would throw them out. Yeah. And then there was one guy that was basically Benny who he did that to, he didn't go down right away, and he just picked him up and threw him. <laughs> Wait, who threw who? The guy he was trying to get out of the bar, Pick. got hit in the nuts, grabbed the guy who did it, grabbed, and just threw him across threw the, the bouncer. Yes, well, through the, the bouncer. Here's one thing a lot of people don't, re- don't realize. I've mm-hmm. been in enough fights and, and actual conflicts mm-hmm. to know this. Mm-hmm. Once the adrenaline starts, you don't have control. You Well, no, you don't have control. <laughs> you, can, you can maintain control easily. But things that would, if I go to Dan right now and hit him in the nuts, he's gonna fall to the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if we're actually fighting and I hit him in the nuts, there's no guarantees going down. No. You gotta, you gotta know what you're doing. Adrenaline's one hell of a drug. Yeah. yeah. Then it wears off and you're like, I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you're like, how did I do that? <laughs> I lifted up a truck. <laughs> Someone get me a phoenix down. <laughs> Doesn't work for Eris, it won't yeah. work for you. Yeah, they don't grow on trees, man. <laughs> they grow on phoenix. I can buy 99 yeah. of them in the store, but I can't spare one for errors. <laughs> nope. There was an old comic. I think, I think it was a Penny Arcade comic. It was like going through all the problems with Final Fantasy VII, and that was one of them. It's like, can't you just spare a Phoenix down? And Cloud's like, you think they grow on trees? <laughs> anyway. 